Hello again, it's your internet dad, uh, sharing life experiences that I offered my own sons in the hope that it will help you. Now, if you like the series, become a subscriber. These uh, videos come out uh, twice a week. I hope they're all informative to you, but some are more amusing and fun than others. The one that I want to talk about today is not amusing and it's not funny but it's extremely important. It's entitled Adrenaline, The Unknown Addiction. Now, I'm not a doctor, but I've observed it in many people. Adrenaline is something that is released quite naturally in the face of fear. It sharpens your senses and it increases the probability you will survive. A good example might be a police shootout that you might see on the news. The, in the face of death, prospect of death, the policeman will probably experience adrenaline. The good news is hopefully it will be over quite quickly and those policemen may never fire their weapons again for several years. In the military context, it is somewhat different. The firing can go on for a long time and it can be repeated uh, many times. I myself have uh, uh, benefited from uh, adrenaline hits many times in the past and it has helped me get through difficult times. The remarkable thing is once the danger is passed, you can miss this experience. You hate the fear, you love the hit. Does this begin to sound like the hallmarks of drug addiction to you? I suggest it is. When you start looking for that through other means, you're on your way to being an adrenaline junkie. Now, many former soldiers who have been in firefights, when they become civilians again, miss that and go looking for it in actions and abuse. The most obvious is alcohol abuse and hard drug abuse. It can also be gambling, and it can be extreme sports. Now, if you've watched my series before, you know that I'm vehemently opposed to hard drugs and the abuse of alcohol. It is strictly for losers, and you have the potential to be a winner, so don't get involved. Where gambling is concerned, I hope you'll see my video on that subject I argue that the only way you can survive financially is to budget your losses. Check the video out. The third way they do it is through extreme sports. And I'll give you three examples where you have sports that are safe but become unsafe when they're taken beyond a certain point. Throughout this series, I've argued for you to take more risk generally, but you must do so within reason. I'm going to give you three examples. Example number one is you may have done parasailing, where you're suspended from a parachute and you're being towed by a boat up to 100, 200 feet. It's an exhilarating and fun thing to do. You can do it with your friends, a double uh, harness. It is extremely uh, safe, as you can imagine, as long as the equipment is good. Parachuting from an aircraft or running off a cliff under a hang glider or a paraglider, one of those big um, uh, flying parachute wings, may seem very dangerous to you, but actually has a very, very good safety record. 
providing the equipment is correct. Wingsuit flying is not. You may have heard of this. This is where the parachutist will deploy his chute, but only after he has flown uh, a bit like a flying squirrel with a flight suit that has material attaching his arms, his legs and between his legs to extend his flight. There is a high probability that if you persist in this sport that you will be killed or you will sustain severe injury. Item number two is mountain climbing. Now it, it gets a bad rap from the public because of the poster child of Everest. And we know that, according to some reports, 6.5% of the people who summit die. But you must always know, also know that mountaineering in normal mountains, outside of this dead zone, can be a fun and uh, interesting pursuit to do. Use the, as, as long as the equipment is correct. This is not true of free soloing. You may have heard the term. This is where a person climbs without ropes and without harness. This sport claims lives every year. The third sport I'm talking about is skiing. Skiing is a very safe sport. The equipment is really good. That extends even to ski jumping and to aerials and doing trick uh, turns with your skis. Where it is not safe, is when you do backcountry skiing in an area prone to avalanche. Uh, that claims lives every year. Now what you might ask is, what do these three examples have in common? Well, it's relatively simple, I think. They enjoyed their sport for many years, and then the adrenaline rush got less and less, and so they were forced to increase their risk more and more to retrieve and keep the adrenaline hit. This can be very expensive to anyone who has adopted this course. Now you might ask, what has all this got to do with you? You may not be a combat soldier and you may not do extreme sports, but you will in the next few years get a driver's license. Or you may already have your driver's license and you're still in your teens or early twenties. All of us have seen young men drive past at high speed on the highway. You've often seen motorcyclists weaving through the traffic at high speed. Why are they doing it? It's for the, the adrenaline rush. Now, they may argue that it's their life to lose, but it really isn't. Uh, certainly not if it involves their passengers, and absolutely not if it involves crashing into another vehicle and taking other people's lives. Now, again, I'm not a doctor, but I believe that any form of addiction is best strangled at birth. So if you see the signals of this adrenaline need, for goodness sake, work it out on your video games or augmented reality. Keep craziness out of the real world and you will live a little longer. Do not become an adrenaline junkie. Now, if you have a friend that you know drives in this crazy manner, for goodness sake, give him the link. It could save his life. So till next time.